I was on the board in New York representing the art directors, and then when I came here, uh, they knew that I was here, so they invited me to a governor's meeting, and then I don't know, it had all just started. And you became a vice president? Uh, yes, and I have been very, very busy since I got here to help. To help, uh, this was a dirt lot. This entire before we came in here, this was a a, fi a dirt field. The CRA, which is the city uh, agency, <coughs> got which together. Which stands for Community Redevelopment. Redevelopment, right? yes. Uh, they got with the academy and. Uh, Rich Frank, one of our past presidents, was very instrumental in meeting with the city and these people in North Hollywood. And a developer, which was found out, was found by John Mitchell, I believe. Who was then president. Yes. I have always been a permanent member of the building committee, <coughs> excuse me, because I was involved with uh, the layout of the plaza and the fountain and, uh, and also uh, consulting architect on the theater. Uh, and then we realized that we had no place. Uh, we were having to have governor's meetings in various hotel dining rooms and various venues. Uh, so we decided, why don't, this was unused. Originally, this being part of the theater building was to have been a very white table restaurant, a very high class restaurant. A posh restaurant. Yes, sir, absolutely. That never never came out that way. And it was dormant, it was unfinished. All this the, conference center we're yes, talking this about. Yes, this is all was all unfinished property here. It was just in finished finished on the exterior, but all just with ventilator pipes and no flooring and insulation uh, showing. So we decided, why didn't we make this into uh, a spot where we could have two areas soundproof so that in one area there could be screenings and another area screenings because the educational department has a lot of screenings to do on student films and whatnot. And they, they had to rent or take over offices up there in, in our building. And that wasn't working out, so we figured that we'd save money if we invested here. So we did. So we, the concept of this was, as you see, uh, two rooms. And then I said, let's uh, take out, make an indentation here. We don't need a full lobby. Take that out and put in two small conference rooms individually. But now I've been taken over as offices, I see. I'm sorry about that because I, put, I spent $5,400 on a round table that went in that glass area there. And now it's gone. I don't know who's got it or where. But anyway, it, it worked out. And uh, I got this carpet, thinking that if they spilt ketchup or scrambled eggs on it, it would not really show. Let's see, we got something right there. But anyway, I, I laid it out. And uh, what about the plaza outside? Um, past uh, doing the drawing of showing the contour of the steps. I had put in uh, uh, laser lights uh, in the, uh, where the treads meet the risers. And uh, fiber optics uh, were in most of them already on the plan. <clears throat> so we had it all lit up, but as time went on, uh, one developer after another changed offices in the tower building that control this property. And they ha didn't care. So it has gone down in, in looks. There are no fiber optic lights on the stairs anymore. I worry about it because we have some older people going into the theater and at night and they can't really see the steps out here. And there, there isn't enough light in this plaza. Did you help design, or did you design the theater as well? I was an associate designer on it. And how does the uh, Television Hall of Fame fit into uh, the concept? The, the bronzes that you see out there in the plaza are all inductees in the Hall of Fame. Right. And 
But when you first started working on this uh, property, there was no Television Hall of Fame, was there? Uh, there was in John Mitchell's, who was uh, the president at the time. It was his idea to establish a Hall of Fame. So we said, as soon as we get our own property, then we can do it. And was it your concept to do it the way we see it today? Yes, it is. What was that? Could you explain well, what the concept uh, was? Well, if you notice, the pedestals out there have the same concept as the columns that support the building. And they're all alike. It's better, if you didn't do it that way, it would start looking like a cemetery. So I said, let's, uh, I did the drawing for the pedestals. And I have a, a locking device. You cannot take those bronzes off those pedestals unless you know the locking device. And I think I'll die with the locking device in my studio because I won't let anybody move anything out there even though I'm not involved with it anymore. But it's a, the only per, other person that knows it is the, those are cast stone, is the casting engineer, and he's gone out of business. Well, is there room for an infinite number of, uh, so no. what will happen? <clears throat> what I wanted to do was to go into bronze, life-size bronze bar reliefs. I, I put in Walter Cronkite, and then you skip a, a, a niche, and then there's Burns and Allen, and then there's Steve Allen. I wanted to, in the first one, I wanted to put uh, Bert Tilstrom and the Kukla Fran and Ollie puppets, life-size, life-size. Now, I, that means it fills the entire frame. It's not a little thing. Then in the next empty one, I wanted to put in uh, Jim Henson and the Muppets because I feel that those two puppeteers have added a tremendous amount to this industry and to the film industry too. Yeah. But that was my plan before I left it. 